97 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Israeli Navy, in cooperation with the Israeli security agency Shin Bet, thwarted a naval smuggling attempt destined for the Hamas controlled Gaza Strip off the coast of Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held a meeting with the chairman of Sudan's Transitional Military Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al Burhan during which the two leaders agreed to begin cooperation with the aim of normalizing relations between Jerusalem and Khartoum. EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell warns that unless all sides agree to U.S. President Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century, peace would remain unattainable. The Israeli Navy, in cooperation with the Israeli security agency Shin Bet, thwarted a naval smuggling attempt destined for the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip off the coast of Egypt's northern Sinai Peninsula. According to details from the operation that were cleared for publication this morning, some three months ago, the maritime intelligence operators of the Israeli Navy located the suspected vessel and dispatched Navy troops to pursue it. The vessel was successfully captured and two terror operatives aboard were apprehended and then transferred to security forces for further questioning. בקריות השליטה הימית זיהו את כלי השיט החשוד בהברכה, הכווינו את כלי השיט אשר פעלו לסיכול ההברכה תוך כדי הפגנת מקצועיות, חתירה למגע וקור רוח. According to the Israeli military statement, the investigation of the terror operatives indicated that the seized weapons were meant to be used by the naval commando units of the Hamas terror organization, while adding that thwarting activity of this kind assists in preventing the ongoing armament of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and degrade the force build-up capabilities of Hamas's commando naval unit. <laughs> על מנת לאתר ולסכל ניסיונות הברכה בדרך הים. סיכול ההברכה שהתבצע במקצועיות רבה פגע ישירות ביכולת החמאס להתחמש ולהתעצם מבחינת הקומנדו הימי שלו. Turning to Uganda, where Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held a meeting yesterday with the chairman of Sudan's Transitional Military Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan. The unprecedented meeting, which was brokered by the Gulf Kingdom of Bahrain and was under the auspices of Ugandan President Yuweri Museveni, lasted for about two hours, after which the two leaders agreed to begin cooperation with the aim of normalizing relations between Jerusalem and Khartoum. The Israeli Leaders Bureau released a statement that read, Prime Minister Netanyahu believes that Sudan is moving in a new and positive direction and reported that to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The statement further noted that Burhan hoped to help his country modernize by removing it from its isolation, as the Republic of Sudan, which has a history of supporting jihadist organizations, including Al-Qaeda, is listed by the United States since the early 90s as a state sponsor of terrorism. An Israeli intelligence source who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity explained that Sudan is keen on improving its relations with the United States and is hopeful that a rapprochement with Israel would consequently change Washington's attitude towards it. Furthermore, normalizing relations between the two countries would likely allow Israeli flights over Sudan, which in addition to other unspecified agreements would greatly shorten Israel's direct travel time to its South American ally Brazil. It is important to mention that Netanyahu's one-day trip to Uganda included a delegation of 45 officials and business people, including Mossad director Yossi Cohen. Furthermore, both Saudi Arabia and Egypt were informed prior to the meeting. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu also held a separate meeting with Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni. During their meeting, the two leaders discussed cooperation between Israel and Uganda in various fields, including civilian, economic, health, water, energy, media, and agriculture. Prior to the meeting, Netanyahu urged Museveni to open a Ugandan embassy in Israel's capital, Jerusalem. There are two things that we want to very much to achieve and we discussed in this visit. One is direct flights from Israel to Uganda, direct flights, because that will enable our friendship to flourish. 
Uh, and second, I have a simple suggestion uh, that you'll have time to consider, Mr. President, my friend. You open an embassy in Jerusalem, I'll open an embassy in Kampala. <laughs> and we hope to do this. Responding to the Israeli leader, the Ugandan head of state pointed to the fact that under the United Nations partition plan of 1947, the western part of Jerusalem was granted to Israel. As such, he does not see an obstacle to open an embassy in the Israeli capital and said that the issue would be studied. There is a part of Jerusalem which under the partition plan was in Israel. So at least that one is not part of the argument. And uh, if a friend says, I want your, your embassy here, rather than there, I don't see why we, we are studying, we are really working on, we are studying that. Turning to Saudi Arabia, where the Organization of Islamic Cooperation announced its decision to reject U.S. President Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century. During the meeting of the 57-member council, which was held in the Saudi city of Jeddah, the Islamic organization called on all of its member states, in accordance with the Palestinian plight, not to engage with the American plan or cooperate with the U.S. administration in implementing it in any form. <laughs> ولدى الدول في منظمتنا مصلحة كبيرة في حماية القواعد والقوانين التي تحكم العلاقات الدولية التي أقرت منذ نهاية الحرب العالمية الثانية جميعنا مهتمون بضمان أن تظل المبادئ العالمية المتفق عليها هي المعيار الذي نلتزم به وصفقة ترامب هي نقيد كل ذلك while the Organization of Islamic Cooperation seemingly rejected the deal, not all of its member states accepted its request. Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs Prince Faisal bin Farhan al Saud underscores Saudi Arabia's continued support for all efforts to keep the wheel of negotiation moving for the purpose of achieving a fair solution for the Palestinian cause. <laughs> للتوصل إلى حل عادل وشامل القضية الفلسطينية فإنها تؤكد على أن نجاح هذه الجهود يستلزم أن يكون هدفها النهائي وتحقيق حل عادل يكفل حقوق الشعب الفلسطيني في إقامة دولته المستقلة وعاصمته القدس الشرقية وفق الشرعية الدولية ومقرراتها Meanwhile, in Israel's eastern neighbor Jordan, EU foreign policy chief Giuseppe Borrell told his Jordanian counterpart Ayman Safadi that unless all sides agree to the American plan, peace would remain unattainable. We have had about the new proposal brought by the United States on the so-called peace plan for Middle East. Jordan and the European Union, we are very much aware that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is one of the longest, most painful and complex conflicts in our history. The experience over the last 50 years has shown that without agreement among all sides, no peace plan has the chance to succeed. The Jordanian foreign minister seized the opportunity to reiterate the position of the Hashemite kingdom. موقفنا هو الموقف الثابت الذي رسمه جلالة الملك بشكل واضح. موقفنا لا تتغير ولا تتبدل. نحن نريد سلاما عادلا شاملا يلبي حقوق الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق وفق قرارات الشرعية الدولية ومبادرة السلام العربية وبما يضمن قيام الدولة الفلسطينية المستقلة وعاصمتها القدس المحتلة. Thank you for watching us, Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem as well as the peace and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.